Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. A good topic? Let's do it. What's one horrifying image that is just burned into your head and it won't go away? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. When my husband passed away, his brother and I were going through his computer and phone. We found hundreds of CP pictures. I can't get some of it out of my head. And we found pictures of him dressed as a woman. We were horrified. I couldn't believe what we found. His brother was heartbroken. I knew he had been cheating on me for years. I just didn't realize that some of the people he cheated on me with were men. These are images that haunt me and it's been almost four years. When my mom found out that they didn't get the cancer after her surgery, the doctor hadn't been in to tell her after hours and hours, and she kept talking about it and acting happy, even though my dad, sisters, and I already knew. After first not really telling her, my dad eventually looked her in the eye and said, Babe, I can't lie to you. They couldn't get the cancer. The sound and image of my mother basically realizing she was going to die is and will always be the worst experience of my life next to actually losing her 18 months later. She kicked cancer's ass for way longer than most people with lung cancer as advanced as hers was, and she will forever be my hero and the most beautiful, amazing person I've ever known. My freshman year at Virginia Tech, watching stretcher after stretcher with white sheets covering bodies being wheeled out of Norris Hall, a friend was on the rescue squad and said the most chilling part was the constant ringtones of the phones of the dead students as loved ones tried in vain to contact them. Horrible day that will stick with me for life. A broodmare, a pregnant lady horse for any non-horse folk, trying to deliver a foal that had grown bigger than she could easily deliver. My friend at the time worked on the farm and called me at work to say she wasn't doing well and asked if I could come to help with the other chores while he and the veterinarian tended to Heidi, the mare. When I got to the farm, I could hear Heidi screaming from outside the barn ran down the aisle, tripped over something on the floor, just outside the stall, and fell against the door. My boyfriend was trying to hold her steady, and the vet and his assistant were trying to tug the foal out of her, using chains around its front legs. Blood smeared along the walls all over the vet, my boyfriend, the mare thrashing and screaming. My boyfriend just gave me a stricken look and said, Go, go away, don't look. And about then was when I realized the foal's head was gone. That was when I tripped over the outside of the door. Poor thing was lodged in the birth canal and had died before they could get it out. They were just trying to get him out and save Heidi. He was just too damn big. My boyfriend just wanted to put Heidi down then and there, but after another 15 minutes or so, they tugged the foal the rest of the way out. Heidi survived the whole wretched ordeal, but could never be bred again. It was heartbreaking seeing her nose around, though, straw after nickering, looking for her baby. My cousins were into some gang shit, white supremacists, sadly, and one night when I was 10 years old, about 6 to 10 people rolled into their family home. They still lived with their parents, with masks on, armed to the tits with guns and knives. I was in the living room with their mom, my severely disabled mom, my 11-year-old brother, and my young nieces and nephews, 8 months to 4 years. The cousins they were after were all in the backyard, and when they saw what was going on, they grabbed all the weapons they had access to and came in, guns literally blazing. My mom and cousin's mom passed my brother and the three babies and told us to lock ourselves in the bathroom, no windows. After some time, lots of loud noises, loads of gunshots, and countless bone-chilling screams, things went somewhat quiet. I was effing terrified. My disabled mom was out there. I needed to see if she was okay. So I left my brother with the babies and proceeded to crawl to a bedroom window where I peered out through the blinds. The fighting had migrated outside at that point and watched my cousin's wife curb stomp someone to death. Someone else got shot. That was all I needed. I ran back to the bathroom and started banging on the door to be let in. My poor brother was too afraid to unlock the door. So for what felt like an eternity, I was directly in harm's way, begging him to let me back in. When he finally did, 
We stayed in there for what felt like an eternity. Eventually, things quieted again. Then my mom came and coaxed us out of the bathroom and into ambulances, where we were praised for keeping the baby safe, but I was too effing dazed to give a shit. My dad came to pick us up later that night. Unfortunately, neither of my parents bothered to get us any counseling after that, and now 20 plus years later, I still have flashbacks. Two of my cousins went away for a very, very long time after that. I know it sounds crazy, but I was so mad that they were sent to prison for protecting their home, their family, their children, my brother and me. My childhood was hell, but none of it compares to that night, watching a life drain out of someone at 10 effing years old. ETA, I mostly had flashbacks in the moment they ran into the house. I was so confused, and then that confusion gave way to overwhelming fear. That sounds wild, unsafe, dangerous, and just plain wrong. The curb stomp thing brings back American History X feelings. Um, I hope you didn't really see all that. It's bad. One time, a friend had been watching my mom change and decided to take a picture of her. He didn't tell me naturally because a few months later, me and a couple of our friends were playing Dungeons and Dragons, but ended up taking a sleepover at his house. We started playing at 7pm and finished at around 11.30. I remember waking up, and because my friend was at an angle to me where I could see his phone, I woke up to go to the restroom. And I noticed he was, well, you know, but I didn't worry about it because I thought it was natural. But when I was about to make a yawn to signal my friend was waking up, I saw a picture of my mom changing. I don't know what's worse, the image of him masturbating to my mom or the picture of my naked mom. So after watching a scary movie, me and my friends decided to go for a quick walk in a forest. Genius, I know. So we were all walking with a flashlight in hand. Then suddenly one of my friends spotted some elk walking away from us further up the path. We were excited, but also quite hesitant. Suddenly, we hear a low-pitched, ice-cold grunt just to the right side of the path. I was standing furthest to the right. A giant male elk was walking slowly past us while looking straight at us. I'll never forget that feeling of goosebumps as we stood there for a second or two before we bolted it back the way we came from. The elk didn't follow us or anything. Thinking back, it was probably just investigating rather than looking to attack, but I swear to God that was scary as hell. My dad owns a small business and has had many of his employees since before I was born. Because of this, I grew up around all the men and was never particularly close to anyone, but saw them all the time. But when I was about 16, one of them passed away and we went to his funeral, the only open casket I've ever been to, and I just lost it when I saw him. It was so difficult to see how different someone can look when they don't have any life in them, if that makes sense. A graphic video of a car crash aftermath where the car was split in half with every part of it squished and broken to the point where it looked like a huge crushed tin can. However, the woman miraculously survived unscathed in the passenger seat and she was so in shock that she just casually rummaging through her bag and fixing her hair as people gathered around the scene. The man was essentially blended and dead in the other piece of the car a few meters away and appeared to be making painful hums because of the gases escaping from him. So when I was about 11 or 12, my parents went on their honeymoon, leaving me home alone, and all my siblings were away on sleepovers. So it was just me alone in a house that's quiet as shit late at night. So I'm in the living room talking with my friends, and my parents' bedroom light turns on. My heart sinks immediately, thinking someone is in the house, and I hang up on my friends, grab a kitchen knife, and go to investigate. As I reach the bedroom, I see the bed moving and someone looking me dead in the eyes. I stop right in my tracks and run straight out of the house with my dog over to my neighbor's house. Literally the scariest moment of my life. I was getting into my mom's car so that she could drive me to school and I didn't realize that a kitten had decided to follow me. I slammed the door shut right in the middle of her back. Basically a sobbing seven-year-old me had to carry a kitten that was still trying to cling to its last moments of life to my mother. I think I was very quiet that day at school. I make sure to always look for any animals that may have followed me the car nowadays. Every time I think of that poor kitten, I cringe in regret. Always check your car doors before you shut them. When I was a kid, I was at a daycare center. The lady who ran it began taking in special needs kids, including one who 
had severe cerebral palsy and was stuck in a semi-powered wheelchair permanently. Like, he could move it, I think, but it would also roll if you pushed it. I think it had some kind of mechanism where you could engage or disengage the motor controls, but I can't remember the chair itself that well. I was old enough and big enough that I was told to watch the other kids occasionally as I was junior. High age, and one of the oldest I know that's probably against the rules of regulation, but it happened. There was also a large concrete pad that formed the back porch that sloped extremely slowly down toward the lawn. The kid in the wheelchair was up under the eave, close to the house, and I'd stepped off to the far side of the yard to get some of the little kids out of the dirt planters. I looked back, and Mason's wheelchair is rolling slowly toward the lawn. To this day, I don't know if someone forgot to set the brake, or one of the other kids, there was about 14 total, flipped his brakes up but he was moving and I didn't get there fast enough. The chair trundled forward, the front wheels dropped off the edge of the concrete into the grass, and the whole effing thing catapulted forward. The kid in the chair was built it in, so suddenly this heavy-ass chair launches forward and completely lands on top of him, smashing him down into the lawn. I'm trying to lift it, but I'm a kid and it's not moving. He's screaming at the top of his lungs incoherently, the littler kids are either staring or screaming too. I yell at one of them to go get adults. Eventually, it feels like a lifetime. One of the adults sprints out of the house and wrestles the chair up, and he gets an ambulance ride to see if anything's broken. And the entire time she's lifting the chair up, she's yelling at the top of her lungs at me for not preventing this. I'm in my early 30s. I still have nightmares about that kid screaming under the chair and feel guilty as hell. More now, as I found out that as an adult, he drove his chair deliberately off a ledge to commit suicide. I'm not entirely sure this wasn't a fever dream, but about six years ago, I remember waking up late at night to see the TV on in my room. That's not too strange. My brother used to watch it and then watch Adult Swim, but the program looked like how I've heard a bad acid trip described. So I sat up on the edge of my bed and blankly stared as various watercolor paints swirled on the screen like melted ice cream. Then every couple of seconds, anywhere from one to five, human faces would pop out through the colors in some odd combination of stretching balloon rubber over one's face and Rorschach's mask from Watchmen. The sets of colors changed every ten seconds or so, and the ominous music was randomly raised and lowered in tempo the whole time. I watched that for about five minutes before the words, the faces, came up on the screen, and then I went back to sleep. I can't for the life of me find it. The closest thing is an animated short from Adult Swim called Face Lift, and I never have dreams anyway, so I'm still freaked out over it. 